Hey everyone, it's Sevi and the new character and weapon banner just dropped for the second half of 2.2. So as always, let's review them, let's talk about them, and let's discuss what value they can add to your account. Okay, so starting with the character banner, we have Hu Tao, Toma, Dayona, and Sayu. And it's kind of funny how the last time we saw Dayona and Sayu was on the Yoimiya banner. And on that banner, the third four star was also a pyro unit, Sinyan. Just saying, are they rerunning four stars again? Mihoyo. <laughs> anyway, but for real, this banner is quite attractive. You have the two newest four stars on it. So it's likely that even older players will be wanting to get more Sayu constellations alongside a brand new Toma. So anyway, my first question is with the characters on this banner, how well do they synergize with Hu Tao? As shielders, Toma and Dayona are strong options to comp with Hu Tao. So as I've mentioned in my last video, I think that Toma consolidates the role of shielder and power resonance well. I'm not that worried about him interrupting Hu Tao's reaction since various sources have shown that Toma's ICD won't conflict with Hu Tao's too much. And of course, he's shaping up to be an overall good support for many potential teams, especially if you're a lower AR player without a good shielder yet. So Diona, on the other hand, fills the shielder support role also, if you build her for that, but she might sound like a counterintuitive pair at first for Hu Tao, since Hu Tao needs the low HP and Dayona's burst is for healing, right? Um, but from my experience, I found that Hu Tao and Dayona actually work pretty well together, especially if Dayona is at C6. So one point that makes this work is that Dayona's heal ticks every two seconds, as opposed to Bennett's one second tick. And that's actually slow enough to not heal Hu Tao too fast. But best of all, once you hit C6 Dayona, uh, you get a bonus EM from Dayona's burst. And that is a good enough trade-off so that even if your Hu Tao is healed above 50%, at least she still gets 200 extra EM, right? So as healers overall, Dayona and Sayu are good and versatile additions to your roster and I'm just glad that Dayona and Sayu have other utilities other than healing, right? In Sayu's case, her ability uh, to use Viridescent Venerer and to swirl, to proc swirl, and then of course she has that addicting rolling mechanic. So since she's a relatively new character, again, even older players like myself might be looking forward to getting new constellations for her. So overall, this banner has pretty good value. It's pretty friendly to newer players, right? Because Diona is one of the best supports in the game. She can shield, she can heal, she applies cryo, and at C6, she gives EM. And as long as you can already access Inazuma, then you can start building Sayu and Toma, and they will both keep you pretty safe. So maybe what could have made this banner perfect is if Sing Chu were on it too, instead of either Sayu or Dayona, but this roster of four stars is pretty good, I'll take it. And as always though, I would only recommend you to pull on the banner if you're going after the five star character, because you don't want to ruin your pity after saving up so much for a character you actually want, okay? But if you are pulling, like if you're gonna try to snag Toma, or if you're really going for Hu Tao, either way, I wish you luck, and this is a pretty good banner. So moving on to the weapon banner, we have Staff of Homa, oh my gosh, Elegy, Wavebreaker's Finn, Moon's Moon as the two new four-star weapons, and then we have some other older four-star weapons, right? So let's talk about this. This will be a bit longer than usual since we're going to cover the new four-star weapons as well, okay? But starting off first with the 5-star weapons, we have Staff of Homa. I wasn't sure if Mihori was actually going to rerun Staff of Homa alongside Hu Tao, but well, they did. It's finally here. And at least this time, you have a quote-unquote guarantee on it, even if it's a 240-wish guarantee. But anyway, if you already have Hu Tao, pulling for Homa might be your goal. Because even at C0, Hu Tao with Staff of Homa is just a different beast, okay? 
But thankfully, Holma is a best in slot even for several other polearm users, right? Basically, it's one of the best 5 star weapons in the game that can really upgrade your account. So, if you were to ask me what would be a better deal, a C1 Hu Tao or R1 Holma, C1 Hu Tao is easier to guarantee, especially if you already have her at C0. Uh, so, can you afford to risk Holma to risk all those wishes and primo gems? If that's not a problem, I personally think that Homa is the better option. C1 is quality of life or stamina management for Hu Tao, and uh, so it does bump Hu Tao's damage indirectly, but Homa is just too good of a weapon, even on other characters, and it will definitely give Hu Tao more damage overall. You get a shiny new polearm to pass around to your other characters, and you can give Hu Tao's previous weapon to someone else also. So, honestly, it would be really, really hard to pass this up if you've been waiting this long to get it. I myself am tempted to get it on my mid-spender account since I wasn't able to snag it last time, right? Alongside it, there's Elegy for the end. And regarding the value it adds to the banner, I would say it's pretty decent. Although it's really an okay consolation prize if you have the right characters to put it on. Currently, I think that the characters that can utilize it the most are going to be Venti, of course, then there's Diona, Kujosara, maybe Aloy, but I'm not that sure on that. Still, it's nice to have Elegy for the End or have this weapon series coming up, which is much more novel than the Skyward series or the Memory of Dust series. Okay, now let's look at the new 4-star weapons. So, the polearm and the bow have the same passives as the Akumaru, which is obtaining an elemental damage bonus based on your party's total energy capacity, capping at an extra 40% elemental damage bonus. And this goes higher the more you refine the weapons. Alright, so we've already seen that Akumaru performs insanely well on R1 for a 4-star weapon, and that's because there are a lot of Claymore users who put a lot of their damage in their burst. So let's see who these weapons would be good on. Okay, first there's the bow, and it has a base attack of 565 with a 27.5% attack substat. And this looks like a decent bow for Venti if you don't have better weapons like a high refinement stringless. It looks like it could do well for a burst support Ganyu. And generally, any bow user who gets a lot of damage from their burst like Amber or Aloy. It's also an attractive option for sub DPS Sara because in terms of dealing damage, Sara's burst is really where it's at. So this moon bow looks like a good alternative to focus on if you don't have the alley hunter. Sacrificial bow is also one of Sara's best four star bows at high refinements and moon's bow presents a nice alternative to that instead. So similar to these two bows, it's a very respectable 565 base attack for Sara to buff your teammates because she only relies on the base attack for the buff. Okay, now looking at the new pole arm, it has a crazy 620 base attack and then a measly 13.8 attack subset, <laughs> which uh, I find kind of interesting. Anyway, that's probably the highest base attack to exist on a 4-star weapon so far, matched only by the alley flash. Still, same burst damage bonus as the Akumaru and the Moon's Bow, and it looks like a very solid weapon that I think, like the Akumaru, should not be underestimated. Characters like Shangling and Rosaria could use it. It's also an option for Zhongli and Toma, but that will depend on your artifact builds and substats because characters like Zhongli and Toma really want more HP than anything. So overall, this weapon banner is surprisingly attractive to pull on because of these new weapons, all right? So whether you want to try snagging one of the four-star weapons is up to you, but if you're pulling for Homa and end up taking home some of the new weapons, I think that's a big win because they look really solid and I hope they perform as well as the Akumaru, okay? But overall, between these two banners, both of them have a lot of value, as in, Hu Tao and Toma speak for themselves, but I'm pretty excited about the new weapons and the fact that Staff of Homa is back. 
Now regarding your pulling, as always, practice caution with the weapon banner. All right, it can go so wrong so fast, but I would still love to hear what you think of these banners and I would love to hear which banner you're pulling on, if any, or if you're just saving for the future. Okay, let me know in the comments and I wish you the best of luck with your upcoming pulls. So that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and turn on the notification bell button. I will be doing guides on the upcoming releases, okay? So be sure that your notifs are on. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care.